Good afternoon everyone. I am Dr. Binod Thapa, PG resident, second year, Department of Radio Diagnosis, Armed Forces Medical College, Pune. Today, the topic of my presentation is amyloblastoma case series and image review. Introduction, amyloblastoma is derived from English word amyl, which means enamel and the Greek word blastos, which means the germs. Germ, odontogenic epithelial tumor that can originate from an embryogenic enamel organ, remnants of the dental lamina, epithelium of the dendritic cyst or the basal cells of the epithelium of the oral mucosa. It is one of the most common benign odontogenic tumors of the jaw. 10% of the tumors of the mandible and maxilla which is slow growing but locally invasive. So transformation into the malignant entity is seen in a uh, rate of 2%. Uh, most commonly it occurs between 30 to 60 years of age group with uh, slight male preponderance. The risk factors include chronic inflammation, chemicals, human papilloma virus infection, nutritional deficiencies, poor oral hygiene, genetic polymorphism. Clinically, they present as a painless swelling of the mandible or maxilla with progressive bucolingual jaw expansion with an egg crackle sensation and tooth mobility and displacement. It occurs in occurs at its early stage until causing expansion of the bone and adjacent soft tissue reaching large size with a significant facial deformity. Most commonly, it occurs in the posterior mandible, posterior body in the ramus region associated with unerupted third molar teeth. So in investigation, normally we start with the orthopantomimogram or the plain film which shows the lytic lesion with impacted molars or resorption of the tooth, tooth roots, multilocalitic classic soap bubble appearance. And the CT scan will define multilocular radiolution expansion lesion with cortical destruction and MRI we have a solid component which is uh, T1, uh, low T1 and the high T2, T2 signal with restriction of diffusion of the solid component. So the radiological features are not the diagnostic one with the definite diagnosis done by the biopsy. Classification, it is divided into four types. The first one, the amyloblastoma, which is 91% uh, percent, with the amyloblastoma unicystic type, the 6%. Amyloblastoma extraversus peripheral type is 2%. And the metastasizing amyloblastoma is of the 1%. The first case is a 43-year-old male presented to the dental OPD with a history of progressive soiling of the left side of the face for the two years. No history of trauma, toothache or tooth extraction, no history of any discharge from the soiling. The patient was experiencing pain while chewing hard food with altered sensation over left cheek for the last three months. On examination, there was a diffuse swelling of the left, middle and the lower third of the face with extension to the midline to the right side. No skin changes noted overlying the skin. On the NCCT, head and neck, axial coronal and sagittal view uh, will define expansion lytic lesion in the body of the left hemi uh, uh, mandible extending from the symphysis menti to the left angle of the mandible. Uh, uh, at the level of second molar tooth with buccolingual extension. The lesion has a narrow zone of transition with ground glass matrix. Multiple thin trabeculate can be seen with scalloping of the both anterior and the posterior cortices with multiple areas of cortical breaches. As to the loss of incisors, canine and the premolar teeth adjacent to the lesion and is seen to run along the inferior aspect of the lesion with the focal areas of DSN. CCT, no post contrast enhancement is noted. And the SP reveals mandibular acanthomatous amyloblastoma, which is a, regarding the acanthomatous variant, it's a rare variant, predominantly multilocular radiolucency uh, in the imaging, tendency to occur more commonly in the molar ramus region and in the males of the older age group. No specific imaging features are there to differentiate the acanthomatous variant from others. The case 2, we have a 26-year-old female patient presenting the operative swelling right side of the cheek with nasal blockage and pain on the right side of the face for 3 months. Swelling gradually increased in size to the present dimension, no history of trauma, no face uh, to the face with no history of tooth extraction, general physical and reviews, hard painful swelling in the right side of the cheek while nasal blockage on the same side. Uh, NCCT PNS, axial, coronal and the sagittal section, there is expansive solid cystic lesion with mixed attenuation contents noted in the right maxilla with compression and displacement of the maxillary sinus anterior superiorly. The lesion is arising, seen arising from the right half of the alveolar process of the mandible as to the teeth 13 to 17 with no displacement and the erosion of the tooth. Uh, there is thinning and rarefraction of the with possible areas of cortical breach at few places and the expansion Expansion is seen causing mild inward displacement of the lateral nasal wall medially. And there is obstruction of the right 
osteomatal opening no intra orbital or extracranial extension seen and the same uh, same uh, patient the uh, ccd pns shows well defined solid cystic lesion in the right maxilla with post contrast enhancement on the solid component and then the hp reveals plexiform type of maxillary amyloblastoma the third patient we have 38 year old female patient present in ent opd complaints of nasal blockage obstruction sinusitis and occasional epistaxis there is associated side left sided nasal swelling and the headache no history of trauma on examination there is a polypoidal solid mass causing the complete obstruction of the left nasal passage on ncct pns axial coronal and the sagittal view a soft tissue uh, density lesion epicentered in the cartilaginous part of the nasal septum on left side with extension towards the left lateral side abutting the inferior terminate and is causing smooth scalloping of the medial half of the nasal left nasal bone cct pns coronal shows mild peripheral enhancement with these features hp shows a suggestive of the extra osseous synovial amyloblastoma plexiform form the synovial plexiform uh, synovial plexiform amyloblastoma they are rare tumors of the synovial tract that arise from the synovial epithelium which comprise 0.1% of all synovial tract tumors most frequently described as radio opaque solid lesion that fill the nasal cavity of the sinus histologically they resemble those arising from the bones of the jaw most commonly being the plexiform pattern with the follicular pattern may also be seen the case for we have a 45 year old male patient presented to the dental opd with complaints of painless heart swelling left side of the lower face for the last 6 month it was progressive in nature with difficulty in chewing from the left side there was no history of trauma to the extraction noted on examination heart form swelling noted in the left lower face with no overlying skin changes on ncct face and neck axial coronal sagittal there is a well defined unilocular expansion lytic lesion seen in the body of the left hemi mandible related to the root of the second premolar the lesion has a narrow zone of transition having the cortical thinning scalloping and the buccolingual expansion with the cortices with multiple area of cortical bridges at the lateral aspect the lesion is also seen above the alveolar uh, inferior alveolar canal with focal area of contact in the inferior aspect of the lesion with this hp reveals unicystic amyloblastoma of the left mandible relatively being biological uh, benign biological behavior and affects the younger age group mostly in the second decade of the life uh, mostly seen in the unicystic amyloblastoma and imaging it is seen as a cystic lesion with a with or without luminal or mural solid enhancement the case 5 A 30-year-old male presented to the dental department with history of swelling in the middle lower jaw of one and a half years duration. The lesion was progressive in nature and is associated with difficulty in opening the mouth. On examination, hard to form cystic swelling was seen arising from the middle of the mandible with more swelling on the right side. On NCCT face and neck, axial coronal and sagittal, there is a well-defined solid cystic expansile lesion. Uh, epicenter in the body of the right mandible the lesion extends from the third molar on the right side till first molar on the left side and is located below the roots of teeth and above the inferior alveolar canal the few absorbed uh, a bone fragments seen within the matrix of the lesion with associated thinning and cortical bridges noted at places so with these finding the hp reveals plexiform variant mandibular amyloblastoma so the differential diagnosis the most common difference diagnosis in this kind of presentation of odontogenic keratosis dentigerous cyst also we should consider the odontogenic myxoma avc fibrous dysplasia hard odontoma osteosarcoma globular maxillary cyst uh, regarding the discussion the key imaging features which we get in the amyloblastoma are the unilocular multi lobular radiolucent lesion with marked buccolingual expansion there will be a cortical bridge root resorption and soft tissue extension due to aggressiveness of the lesion most commonly lie above the inferior alveolar canal enhancement of the solid component is seen on the ct and mri the cystic component with low t1 weighted and high t2 weighted signal is seen and there is diffusion restriction of the solid component ct and mri are useful in delineating internal cystic and solid component cortical bridge social soft uh, so soft tissue extension uh, relationship to inferior alveolar canal and enhancement of solid component septation 
Uh, these are my references. Thank you.